regulars in Stephen. We're sharing a Valentine's Day together and doing a very special episode of Who Are You? So, Stephen, welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. It's been a pleasure to spend Valentine's Day with you in your company. I couldn't think of anything I'd rather be doing. I know, mate. I know. And we might as well call it out. We're actually into the second part of this because we recorded mine beforehand and we're now going to Stephen's Who Are You? So, we've pretty much spent all the evening and then we're going to go and watch the game we're playing Coventry tonight for whenever this is released and we'll probably be doing a spaces afterwards so we are fully just spending the whole evening together. So, look, we won't try and take up too much more time, but let's go into uh, the questions we've got outlined again for anyone who just wants a bit more information on what we're doing here. So for all the panel, we're just doing a bit of a, a get to know you session or who are you session. We've got a few questions lined up and finding out all about Stephen's Millwall life. So we'll go straight into it. So, We'll go over your Twitter handle, Stephen. I know we can see it on the on, on the video, but for anyone who's watching on the on the pods, yeah. So at SPJ ninety one, um, I tweet a lot of rubbish about Millwall. If you're not a Millwall <laughs> fan or you're not a football fan, or maybe a little bit of cricket, well, obviously me and Ben have, have had a bit of discussion about the cricket in the past as well. Um, but yeah, you can catch me over there. And uh, if you're interested in in what I have to say, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, but. It's a lot of Millwall waffle, really. Mainly Millwall, isn't it, mate? And uh, yeah. where are you based? Uh, I'm actually one of the, the Kent uh, contingent, I must say, that, that tends to get a lot of um, lots of traction on social media. My my family uh, my family are from South London, so that's where kind of the roots and, and becoming a Millwall fan started. But they moved out to Kent sort of many years ago, my grandparents and then my dad and, and now myself. But... Um, yeah, one of the Kent Kent Millwall fans. So uh, probably one of them. Pelters, probably going to get a few pelters for that after when this goes out. <laughs> Absolutely, mate. And you mentioned the roots there, so it probably goes into the the next question and answer quite nicely. But how did you become a Millwall fan? Because my dad does. That's probably <laughs> the the most common answer that we we have. I think most Millwall fans are the same. My my granddad, um, unfortunately, we lost him. At the back end of, of last year, um, he he had trials for Millwall when he was, I think, 16 or 17, but with his older brother, <clears throat> unsuccessfully, unfortunately, but obviously still had a love a love of the club. Uh, my great grandparents lived um, just off of Ilderson Road, so just around the corner from from the ground. So when my dad was sort of my age and a bit younger, going to games, he had somewhere to stay, they'd get his tickets for him. Um, before the, 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 the before the days of the internet, so my dad was was an influence. I don't think necessarily it was a case of um, it was pushed on me. I think my dad always hoped and wished that I would grow up and and have the love of the club that he has. And obviously, thankfully for him, and I'd say thankfully for myself, I have. <laughs> Yeah, it could have been a lot worse, mate. There's a lot worse clubs to uh, yeah, support in, in, our, in, in our catchment area and probably come on to that a bit later. But So what were your first memories of a, a Millwall game? Um, impressions, yeah, memories, first game you went to, that sort of thing. So the first game I went to, I was three. It was in 1994. Um, I know this because I downloaded the app, the Footballology app and recorded I went through all of my old programs and recorded them all on there so I could have them sort of digitalized I don't remember much of the game we played Wolves at the den we won one nil and all I remember was I actually fell asleep in the <laughs> in, in during the game and we scored and the roar of the crowd woke me up and again I, I it's probably unfair to say because I, I don't remember the game I just remember being woken up by the, the sheer volume of, of the crowd cheering the, the goal. Role. And uh, yeah, I've never forgot it. I've never, ever forgot it. It, it, it stuck with me. Ever, you know, we, we've had some good experiences at the Den, but that roar, that first one was was pretty special. The first game I actually do remember was probably a couple of years after. It was an away game. And we went to Plymouth and it was the most boring nil-nil. We went, and I went on the coach with my dad, but I never forget, we were right behind the goal. And we, we all got a penalty in the 97th minute. It was something ridiculous. I believe it was Mark Bertram and he absolutely levered it over the crossbar. And the sheer disappointment of having to get back on the coach after that at six years old, trying to understand 
well, why didn't he score? What, why did, what, what happened? It was, but that was my first, probably the first memory of a game was 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 a Mark Bircham penalty miss, which is quite depressing, really. But I stuck with it. It got better. Yeah, we, we, we spoke about this on my one. But it certainly got better in recent years. But yeah, not, not the best way to start. <laughs> no, I mean, this is actually probably a question, not so much for you, but maybe from a family point of view. So did your dad and granddad obviously went to the old den? Did they talk about their times at the old den? This is a bit of a curveball question. So yeah, did they go to the old den? Where did they sit? What were their memories? Did they talk to you about it as a kid? Yeah, I mean, my, my granddad's used to go a lot. Um with his sort of friends and, and, and brothers a long time ago that, that he used to go. I think whilst he was still a fan, he's he kind of stepped away from it a little bit as he got a little bit older. Obviously, he would still check on the results, go to the odd game. But my dad, my dad was just obsessed with it. He he used to stand on the halfway line at the old den. He'd always tell me, he'd do it, and every time we see a picture, he'd kind of like, we, he tries to zoom in on his phone and go, oh, that, roughly that was where I... I used to sit and kind of tell stories and you hear the old stories of, of what the old den was like. Unfortunately, I wasn't born. Uh, well, I was born just before the new den was, was opened, but obviously never was able to go to the old ground. But in a way, I think this sounds really strange and it might come across odd to, to, to supporters, but in a way I'm quite relieved. I never went to the old, to the old ground first I feel like lots of people have memories of the old ground and it will never be the same. And I, I wouldn't like to have that feeling. I've never known any different than the, than the, than the den, what we've got today. So yeah. in that sense, yeah. it would, of course, it would have been nice to go. But in that sense, I, I've only ever known the new ground. And in a way, I, I quite like that. Something that I mentioned in mine as well. What are your feelings if we do get that new Bermondsey or that new build, new look stadium? Something you're a fan of, or I t- I'm not a fan of the concept art that's gone, that's been doing the rounds of the sort of bowl shaped and whole new. It's a completely, it looks completely different. I would quite like, I like the idea of perhaps filling in maybe the corners at the home end. So having a, a maybe a little bit more of a U shaped, if you imagine, sort of the away end would be standalone still, or maybe fill in the corners. Um, at home, that that might be something that could work, maybe to increase the capacity. And you know, if you know down the line we we get promoted, that could be quite quite interesting. But I was talking to someone, a Sunderland fan, and it was their first time visiting the Den um, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, and they said it's an old school football ground. They love it. That was that. That was the that was the the overriding. They loved coming to the ground because it's an it is old school. We and we are an old school club. And I think if you come away from that, you might start coming away from what Mill is and, and what we are as a club. So ideally, I'd keep it the same as it is. But I would be interested, perhaps, if there was going to be any redevelopment, to maybe just fill in those two corners at the home end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that would certainly add a lot to the grounds. I think it's a great idea just to fill in the home end. Um, yeah, I think that's not a bad idea. That leads us into the next question. So, do you like the den? And the questions that we got here says the new den. And again, we spoke about this, so it's not really for us or fans of our age. We just say the den. Is it? Do you, do you like the grounds? Um, yeah, you already said some improvements on it, but yeah, generally, do you like the ground and where do you sit? I love, I love the den. I love, I love the. It, it sounds weird. I've never lost the feeling of going to a game at home, even. You know, this is my quick maths now. This is my twenty eighth season going to games, and the buzz of going to turning up, getting into your seat. You know, the people that I, I can't come on to where I sit, but the people that sit around me, we, I know them now. We've been sitting there for so long. You you know the faces. You say hello. You talk. You meet, and maybe at away games. Um, I sit up in block ten, directly behind the goal. I'm my. Um, see, I've, I've, a few years ago, I was a little bit superstitious, and I sit directly in line with the penalty spot on the halfway line, and I had a little bit of OCD with it. It never worked because we, I sat there, we won a game, so I said to my dad, "Right, we have to do this all the time now. You have to sit on the left, I have to sit on the right, and that's it." 
if it had actually worked, we'd have won the Champions League by now. <laughs> but it just it's just stuck. And um, we used to sit in the lower, and then one day we decided to go up the top. And as I say, yeah, been up in block ten ever since. Nice, nice. Now going away from the stadium and into the the players. So favorite all time Millwall player. We spoke about this, to say, on Ben's previous recording. Uh, we, lots of fans of different eras have their have their heroes. Um, I could only I could only name two. Uh, there's so many, but Neil Harris and, and Tim Cahill were just absolute legends of the club. They they were my heroes as a kid. They they were who I looked up to. I know you're going to push me for one, and that's understandable. I'm going to go with Neil Harris. Um, I love Tim. He was, he, you know, the, the, obviously the goal at, at, against Sunderland to take us to the FA Cup was iconic. But Neil Harris was, he is, to me, he was kind of Mr Millwall. He's done everything for, for the club. He he was, obviously, the cancer as well that, you know, probably stopped him earning a Premier League move, but to come back and to break the record, to to, to come back as manager and achieve what he did as manager as well. I, I've, I just have full respect for him. I was gutted, absolutely gutted when it was announced that he was leaving the club, both as a player when, when he did and as a manager. And I, I think for me, if, if there was ever going to be a statue outside the ground, for me, he'd be the first name on the, on that list for me. Do you know what? I mean, that's interesting. I don't want to talk about too much of what I said, but I said Tim Cahill. And mm. I wouldn't build a statue of, of Cahill, but I'd build a statue of Neil Harris. So that's quite interesting, mm. that. Um, and he is Mr. Millwall, as you said. So I don't think many people are going to argue with that. Might lead in then to maybe your next answer, but favourite all-time Millwall manager? Is he up there? He is. I think uh, when he was announced as, as manager, actually, initially... I think it was kind of done on a temporary. He that he took over, didn't he, for like three or four games. Then they give it to someone else, shall we say? And then <laughs> he uh, he um, when he took the job over permanently, he took over, and we all knew we were going down. It, it, he they, he almost saved us. That the results did pick up, and it, it it almost it almost worked. But we were kind of destined to to, to go down. And you, I always had the worry that he was going to sort of tarnish that reputation. So he was a great manager, loved him. He achieved some absolutely amazing things. But I'm going to I'm going to go alongside with what what you said. I think in my time as as Mil, as a Millwall fan, Kenny Jacket brought um, stability after a sort of a rough period. Um, he brought some good results. He brought a feel good factor. He got us to Wembley on multiple occasions, gave us some absolutely outstanding moments. And I think it's very interesting when we look at managers and, and the longevity of managers, because he come in, I think he was, I think his clubs were Swansea and Watford. He'd never really had anything to do with us, but he bought into what it meant to be Mill manager. And he, he gave me in my sort of younger days, maybe sort of mid, early mid teens some absolutely incredible moments that I, I think will stick with me forever and and for that I think he has to be my my favorite manager in my lifetime as well just going back to the Harris appointment and the Harris managerial stint do you think he did tarnish his legacy in any in any way with how how, how it finished as, as, as manager in my eyes no I don't think he did. I think there will always be, I think if when you're a manager of a football club, you are always, always going to end up the proverbial villain because you could be fantastic for years and years and years. But as soon as it starts to go wrong, and it will, because no one can be, um, you know, no one can be have continued success unless you're a, you know, Guardiola at City or, 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 or what Alex Ferguson was at Man United. I think that was all. It was always going to end in him leaving the club. I think the there'll be fans out there that perhaps will may have a different opinion of him. But I like to think I think he had a hand in the end in in getting us Gary Rowett. I think he definitely definitely played a part in that, and I think he knew that he had done everything he could for the club 
he couldn't take us any further and it was his decision ultimately to walk away he didn't do what Holloway did and waited for a payout he didn't he didn't overstay his welcome as such he knew it was the time to go and I think he did the right thing so no I don't think he tarnished his 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 reputation just the one thing that you said there about him having a part in Rowett I'm I'm almost certain Rowett mentioned him in his very first interview and said that he'd, he'd spoken to to Neil Another question on the Harris piece, and obviously we'll move on from this in a sec, but would you ever have him back in the right no, circumstances? I, the problem is the right circumstances to bring Neil Harris Probably the back, wrong ones. <laughs> yes. Would yeah. be a time of the club in need of of, um, of rescuing or of someone to come in and try and galvanise the, the troops, if you will. So... Yes, I'd love to have Neil Harris back one day, but that comes with if we're in a position where we're looking at bringing Neil Harris back, we might not Some be. Perhaps, wrong. <laughs> yeah, we might not be in the position that we're in now. Yeah, no, totally agree. Okay, so now moving on to players, who's the worst play you've ever seen in a Millwall shirt? Oh God, um, just for the listeners and 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 viewers. We'd obviously, as Ben said, we've done this before and we'd pre-prep the questions. This was a question that I looked back and just thought, how 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 am I going to answer that? Because you, as, <laughs> I think you said it on your one as well, that you, you you try and support any player that puts on a Millwall shirt. You try and get behind them and, and it just, it, sometimes it's harder. I'm going to go with one and it's interesting because this is going to probably lead on to another question later that, that we'll come to. But the season we signed Baz Savage, and he <laughs> this made me laugh. Oh, he had he had a, him. a piece on Soccer AM where when he scored, he used to do the moonwalk, didn't he? That was his celebration yeah, yeah. in boots. And he got out of his car at the den. I'd got to the ground early, um, and he got out of his car, and I asked for his autograph, as you do. And he said, "Yeah, yeah, sure, no problem." And, and there was a few people around, and I said to him, "Oh, Baz, are we gonna are we gonna see your moonwalk today?" And his exact words were, "If I can get the ball in the back of the net, yeah." And it never, I never forget it because it, I lost all confidence in our strikers. <laughs> it wasn't a, it wasn't a particularly bad comment because it's true. You've got to put the ball in the back of the net to be able to celebrate. But the way he said it, I just thought. He's got no chance. <laughs> no, and we never saw the moonwalk. He didn't score. He was absolutely... He, funny enough, in that game, he it, that was against... I think it was against Luton, and he missed an absolute sitter at the Coldblow Lane end. And it just... At that point, I just thought, well, we're not seeing this moonwalk. We're, we're, it's not going to happen. <laughs> and, no, and that, for me, he was... And just combining everything together... The, how he drained the confidence from me, I think he's got to be up there with the worst. There's been a couple it's, of others, but go on, on honorable mentions to Rob Hulse. Rob Hulse, I know he scored a cracking goal at Luton in the cup when we got made the semi final, but other than that, he, yeah. he, he, he replaced the, Chris was that Wood. A volley, wasn't it? Kind of, yeah, like, like a chip, a, chip we, come, yeah, it's like a straight, it's, it's sort of almost like a Pele, but he kind of lobbed the goalkeeper, but yeah. he was terrible. and uh, to touch on on your episode when we we recorded yours, Gary Taylor Fletcher, just purely for the picture of him standing in the shirt, looking like, well, he just looking looked, like he, someone had hired the den out and just thought he'd yeah, turn up in a in a kit. He'd, he'd won a charity competition to play a game or be announced <laughs> in the squad or something. But yeah, yeah no, they're the honourable mentions. But I, don't, I have to go with Bass Savage. He was dreadful. It's a good shout. I like that one. I like that one. More happier times now. So most, well, it might not be actually because mine wasn't necessarily a happy one. But uh, most memorable match. Most memorable match. I- I'll be honest with you. My my most memorable match is actually quite recent times, and this goes against the grain of of talking about the cup final and 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 the legends of of years gone by. But my most memorable match was Millwall four, Bristol Rovers three, in the League One um, season when we got promoted. I, I went, I was there. And when you go to games, especially when you go away from home, you've always got that feel of um, 
a bit nervous and it was such a big game. It was in our hands, but it didn't feel like it was in our hands. It was just awkward. Go ahead. I think um, Lee Gregory and Steve Morrison played really well that day. And I think we went in at half time. It might have been two, three, one. I think it was, or three, two up. They scored a free kick in the second half and the atmosphere in the, the middle end, we knew we'd blown it. South end were in the top six. And that moment, the moment when Sean Hutchinson scored that goal, I just, the the feeling of the ball hitting the back of the net, it, the relief, it, mainly relief because all of the hard work had, had you know, it paid Meant off. And we, yeah, we mm. were going to be in the playoffs. And I remember they he come over and celebrated right in front of where we stood and all the supporters were all bundled towards the front. It was We were in the standing bit as well. So everyone just absolutely packed forward towards the advertising boards. And that, yeah, that, that, that moment, I think without that moment, we could potentially be, you know, I'm not saying that we'd maybe be doing what Scunthorpe and, and what happened to Scunthorpe and South End dropping out of the football league. But, if you look at what that's meant to us, to where we are today, that to me is is probably the best moment of 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 me following Millwall because it's propelled us to to protect to being on the the edge of something potentially um, quite special. It's interesting with all those games, whether it be the Bristol Rovers one, and then South End not making the playoffs that year. But you look at even Bradford after we beat them, mm. League Two. You mentioned Scunthorpe and, and obviously Southend after that. So they're really you look back at those games now and you think those sides that we played or beat to get into playoff positions, it could have been us, which is a scary thing. You'd like to think it wouldn't have been, but yeah, absolutely could be. So is that one of your favourite ever Mill moments, or is there another one you want to mention? Um it's for it. Morrison's winner at Wembley. Uh, just that was that was incredible. That to 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 again under Harris. I think it was. Be- I think because it was under Harris. That's what makes that moment better. Had that been another manager, yeah, we won at Wembley. I mean, we won at Wembley under Jacket, you know, and and and, and whatnot. But because it was Harris that was was the manager, I just think it felt like that that. Uh, <laughs> No, I'm not. I was. I'm going to go. I'm going to mention so many, so many different moments. I, for me, the big, the best moment, the best moment for me was was Sean Hutchinson's goal. I know people will say, "Oh, we've been, made the FA Cup," and they were incredible, special times. They really, really were. But what it's meant to us and this to the team in this current time and this current phase, I, I can't, I can't think of a, a bigger moment for us than that. I mean, yeah, as you said, for, for recent seasons, it's just so important, right? It gave us the springboard to where we are now. And if you, if we dare say we get to a certain position or a certain league, then, yeah, very important. Mm. Funniest ever Millwall moment? It's funny. Uh, again, this is quite tricky because you sort of think of stories that of of games and it tends to be more away from home when funny things happen rather than rather than at home. I remember a few years ago, um, we are uh, used to the, the season. It's actually the season we got promoted that, that league one campaign. And we did a little bit of a league one tour. We, I did a lot of the games that year. I didn't miss hardly any. And one that we went to was Burton. I went with some friends I usually go with my dad, but he, he couldn't make it. I with some friends. And I've always been known as kind of the, the planner, the, the, the put the tickets, it's all sorted, it's all done. And I made a l- really late decision to go. So someone else had booked all of their tickets, I booked mine separately. And no one had said anything. We're all getting the car, driving up to Burton. And it's quite a distance. It's not like you can turn around and, and go back and pick up the tickets. And we get we get half an hour from the ground. And my friend Emma, she turned around and said, oh, you got the tickets, didn't you? I went, I've got my ticket, yeah. She said, "No, you've, you've got all the tickets. Don't, like, don't be silly." I went, "No, I've got my ticket. You sorted your, you <laughs> sorted your tickets out yourself. This isn't anything to do with me." And the sheer panic of everyone else in the car thinking that they've driven all the way to Burton to stand outside, which was one of the worst grounds, just the panic set in. We we tried to contact. Um, the media team we tried to contact the ticket office we we tried everything and finally someone 
someone come back to us and, and drop me a message and said, look, go to the ticket office and we'll try and sort it out. Thankfully, we got there and those guys were let in. Burton printed some tickets for us. But the sheer panic for half an hour of thinking, well, I, and I, I, there's me going, oh, I'll FaceTime you and I'll just hold the camera up and you can watch the game on FaceTime while, while you sit outside. And considering I wasn't driving, it was... Um, it not it possibly not a, a funny moment for for other people, but for me, just just the sheer panic that had set in was was absolutely brilliant. But thankfully, in the end, it was all it was, it was all, all right. We got in. It yeah. was all right. Is that a also best story about following me? Would that be up there or something um, different? Thing? No, the the best story I've got. I this. <laughs> If my mum listens to this, she's going to be very annoyed because it, she doesn't <laughs> like this story very much. Um, we played Manchester City at Main Road, and I was about eight or nine, so it was still it was still um, it was still Main Road. It wasn't it wasn't the Etihad, and we made the decision, me and my dad's my dad's friend and his son, to go. And it happened to fall on a family member's big birthday celebration. And we were like, we'll be back in time. We'll be back in time. It's fine. We've got the train booked. Well, the game was horrendous. To start off with, the taxi driver wouldn't drive us to the ground because he was too scared to go close to, to the ground. So he said, I'm going to drop you off here and you have to walk the rest of the way. It was quite lively that day, wasn't it? It all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I was sat there, say, about eight or nine years old. I think we lost two nil. It might be two or three nil, and all I remember was watching the game. I think we had a corner, but all of a sudden, a brick had gone, had been thrown from the Manchester City end into the mill end, and it just caught my eye. And I just watched it go over through my eye line into our, and then it all, it all kicked off. It was absolutely horrendous. <laughs> At the end of the game, they kept us in, and. As you as you know, you've been been away from home. You get kept in. It's it's probably for your safety, but you just want to get home. You, we've been beat. It's miles away. We were marched through. What was it? Uh, Moss Side, I think. It's Moss Side, isn't it, in Manchester? Lovely place. Right. Marched through. Remember looking up at the tower blocks, and there were people sort of ten rows, ten flats up in these tower blocks, looking down at us. Thing, and we just, I clung onto my dad's leg. Absolutely petrified as a kid, thinking, "Oh God, this is awful." And at that time, we didn't really have a mobile. They, they, they just started to be to come, like to you know, remember the old brick phones. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. we, but my dad didn't have one, so and we wasn't able to get hold of my mum. And we was to tell her that what was going on, and we we finally managed to get on a train. We we wasn't supposed to get on it. It was supposed to be for home supporters only, but we managed to sneak on it and, and get ourselves back to back to London. And we turned up at the party and everyone had gone home. <laughs> and my mum, to this day, she is still mad about it. She, oh, she, she <laughs> Not me, because I was only a kid. It wasn't my fault, but my dad's got a bit of a mouthful. So um, that's probably... That's probably the funniest story I've got because we still talk about it. I said that was that was a long time ago, but we still talk about it because it it still rattles my mum a little bit. If ever we if ever we're going to a game and there's like an event going on, we'll we'll always mention Man City and just get the look of you better get home on time. <laughs> you dare, you dare let <laughs> yeah, that happen again. <clears throat> That's two decent stories there. So yeah, fair play, and I I, I definitely think you need to keep that up with mum every oh, time well, you go absolutely. to an away game. Absolutely. So, now, moving into more recent times, favourite player out of the current squad? This isn't going to come as any surprise to you and any of the regulars that listen to this show. It's George Savile. Um, I think it's interesting because when he when we signed him and he, I think he scored 11 goals from midfield and he was the goal scorer in midfield. He was, he was the, the, the thing that we missed. And then he was sold, and it was it was very disappointing, and we didn't quite replace. We people obviously made the joke that we replaced George Savile with George Savile, eventually, because no one else that come in really did the job that he did. But he's not a goal scoring midfielder anymore. He's he's kind of like a, an enforcer, and the role just seems to suit him. Of course, it, you know Fleming's been brought in to score goals from midfield, and 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 he's doing a good job of it. But if you'd have said when Savile rejoined the club that he was going to be an enforcer, you'd have probably gone, no, he's he's not the right type. But he's just worked exceptionally hard with again alongside Billy Mitchell in that in that middle. 
And I think when George Savile plays well, you notice it. And when he doesn't play well, you notice it. If he has a bit of an average game, it, 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 that, which doesn't happen, he plays well, Mill will play well. When he doesn't, I think you notice it. And I think teams start to overrun us in midfield. I'm not going to put all the credit on him. I think Billy Mitchell obviously is has been fantastic and deserves a lot of credit for his work with him. But I think Savile has, has changed his game massively to suit what Rowett wants him to do. And I think he's done it very, very well. It's interesting, the Savile one, because whatever Borough did to him, I mean, it's worked out well for us now. And he's probably worked his way back again as he's got older, isn't he, in terms of probably being a 10. So now being more of a, a traditional kind of six player. Mm. But whatever Borough did to him, they absolutely ruined him because he's not he's not the player that we let go, but he's still very, very good, right? But I say, change of position, change of role in the team. I think it actually, in a, in a way, which is strange because you'd expect it from us, but it, it's kind of toughened him up a little bit. He's kind of come back and not afraid of ta- not that he was afraid of tackles initially, but he's he's not afraid to get stuck in. And I think, as you say, Borough might have taken away a little bit of the flair and the the sort of goal scoring ability out. Maybe it was confidence because he wasn't playing much. But I just think he's he's been very very good in that sort of um, midfield too. And yeah, I, I when when Savile doesn't play, it doesn't happen often. But when he's not. On the team sheet, I'm a little bit bit disappointed because I think it, it, we do miss a lot with him um, not playing. Yeah, yeah, no, totally agree. Going back to favourite games, favourite away day, um, and something that you asked me, you go over a favourite ground to visit, a favourite away day in terms of opponent to play. I'm assuming it's not Man City. <laughs> no, could no. be. <laughs> it maybe next year. Maybe, but maybe. Um, maybe no. I would say so my. I'm going to start. I'll start with the the favourite ground to visit. A few years ago, I went to Sheffield United, Bramall Lane. It was the year again. I think we were going for the top six. It might have been. It was under Harris. It was the year. It was the year under Harris where we went on that long unbeaten run, the second half of the season. And we went to Bramall Lane and they were going for the top six. We were going for the top six. It was built up as quite a a real high profile game because I think I think at the time we might have been seventh, they might have been eighth. And as Millwall fans, you you know you know the score, you know what to expect, you know how you get treated, and you don't really feel intimidated when you're with your own because you, you just don't. But the atmosphere in Bramall, inside Bramall Lane that day was incredible. It's the best atmosphere I've I've seen Millwall play in that's not been at home. Um, and they scored when they scored. They went one 0 up, and the roar that the it was it felt like an old school football ground, which I really quite like. I know it's kind yeah. of bowl shaped. <clears throat> it's not lot like our ground, but it was it was an incredible atmosphere. We actually, it was it was the game where we scored directly from our kickoff. It was not back to Jake Cooper. Cooper knocked it over the top. Morrison ran onto it and scored right in front of us. And then the roar from the Millwall fans to score straight away to bring us back was again absolutely incredible. I think there's sort of sixteen hundred of us. But I often say that the atmosphere that day inside Bramall Lane was the best I've been in that's not been at, at Millwall. And I think as a Millwall fan, I can appreciate that. You go to grounds, I think you spoke about this, you go to places like Reading and it's a little bit soulless. There's no, there isn't much of an atmosphere. But but Bramall Lane was was quite special that day. And we didn't lose, it, you know, it would have, it might have been, I might have felt differently about it had we have lost the game. But the fact that we come away of a point and we were still obviously on that unbeaten run and, and the, you know, it was, it was very, very good. Um, Favourite, favourite away... Sorry, what was your? It was favourite away day, wasn't it? Favourite, all right. Oh, best away day and favourite yeah. ground to visit. So, any for Bram- historical reasons or anything like that. Well, Bramall Lane, I would say, is probably my favourite ground to visit so far. Yeah. That that was that I'd probably cover with that one. And favourite away day, I'm going to give a slightly different answer to the to the um, to the Bristol Rovers answer because I know I touched on that as favourite moment. We played Walsall. Uh, in the league again, the year we were promoted, and it was actually Marlon Romeo's debut. We had no Carlos Edwards, and we had no. Who's the other one that was injured? 
Justin Hoyt. Something would have been Hoyt at that Possibly. time. Possibly. Both, both right backs were injured, and we didn't. Uh, on the, we, we went up for, for some reason. We went up on the coach. We usually we usually drive, but and we're sitting there. And you, the fans were thinking, "Who's going to play at right back? Who are we going to play at right back?" And the team was announced when we was on the coach, and it was Marlon Romeo. And he thought, "Okay, interesting. He's been drafted in to play in the the, the sort of under twenty ones. Well, you know, it doesn't hurt. You have got a blood in young players, and he scored one of the best goals." I think I've ever seen a Millwall player score. The one-two with Jed ran into the box. His celebration was a bit dodgy. I think he was young. He didn't really know what to what to do. What but to he, do? he had a he had a really he had a really good debut. He, he played really really well. And I, I remember there was a pass. Um, the second goal we scored, the pass from uh, I think um, Sean Williams that that got Gregory away. Gregory ran through and we scored. And I always remember that the. Um, my dad, who is very, uh, very mild Millwall fan, he's he's a bit of a gentle giant, really. He, he he's not, he doesn't. He, of course, he gets excited and then cheers for the, the goals and gets involved, with, you know. But he's very mild mannered. Ended up on the floor because it, the, the celebrations were just absolutely insane. So I uh, that 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 was that was a good away game. That was a good away game. And obviously, Marlon went on to to make it into the first team. I know it ended quite poorly, but it was quite cool to sit to be there to see that debut and, and the impact that you had on the team. I didn't want to take this bit over, but I've been looking at this question since I asked, or you asked me it, and there was two games I actually forgot to mention in mine, so I'm going to mention it in yours, Steve. Yeah, go for it, yeah, yeah. I'm going to say the first one for best away day was recently when I took my little one to Preston. And I think yeah. just it was all the feels of... One, it was obviously a great result, but having her there, taking her to that, probably should have said it because it was an unbelievable day. We played unbelievable as well. Um, and it's a proper old school ground, um, Deepdale, which is which is quite nice. So that was one up there. But I think one that I really, really missed out on, and it's again another Gary Rowett away day, was Nottingham Forest. And that was... I said I said Palace earlier, but that thinking about it was probably as good, if not better. Mm. And I think it was one of the times that following Millwall away from home, you don't go to Forest and win three nil. What was it? Or three one? Whatever it was, you just don't do it. But it was the manner of that performance that night, and it was as good as I'd seen us play. Obviously, Matt Smith scored a hat trick. We had a decent following there that night. It was on telly, and it was just. It was a time where I I just kind of sat back and went, we're a de- we're a decent side, we're a really decent side now because you just wouldn't go to those sorts of places and, and get a result, let alone the manner that we did. And as I say, the night was just brilliant. Um, and I forgot to mention it on mine, so sorry for mentioning it. That's now. all right. No, no, it's just a shame with that going back to that though that COVID kind of ruined. It was the last game ruined, before yeah. COVID. <clears throat> yeah, the last I think game. we were supposed to play Derby at home. Derby at home was the next game. And um, you go in and off the back of a hat trick for your striker, and I think we'd made the top six. I think we'd on that Friday we just sneaked in, and then it was obviously COVID hit, and yeah, unfortunately it all changed. But no, that uh, yeah, that that was that was special. It was. was special. As, as I say, it was a real wake up moment of going. Just we don't win at places like this. Certainly not in recent years. No. Just we went up there. Just said, we're going to get beat. We're on telly. We're just going to lose. It's more of a night out. We'll, we'll have a good laugh. And as I say, we just went into it and just played them off the park. And it was just one of the most complete away performances I've ever seen. It was a great night, obviously. That was right up there for me. And I forgot to mention it earlier. Anyway, back to you, mate. And more importantly, you. We're now going to go into something a little bit different. And who would you say your most hated clubs are or your top three biggest rivals are as a Millwall fan? And this is Number. very personal. It's just you. Yeah. Not we spoke about this on the kind of the the, the, the break in between of, of doing this, and we we were discussing the West Ham piece. But yeah, go into yours, and then we will maybe chat about why they're at positions. Number one for me, without a shadow of a doubt, is Leeds United. I cannot stand them. I every <laughs> I just everything about my old one of my old bosses was a Leeds fan. We used to have a lot. Of, we he gave me a lot of stick. I gave him a lot of stick. It was great. It was absolutely brilliant because it was the uh, where I, 
previously worked it was the year that we both got promoted obviously they did it automatically we did it um through the playoffs but we'd give each other so much stick and a lot of people i think there'll be a lot more old school fans that would say absolutely die hard number one west ham for me i grew up and i would imagine you grew up at a time where we played leeds an awful lot and it just felt like that they always thought oh we should be beating Millwall. we we're we're better than them we're this that and the other and yeah, okay, at Ellen Road, they may have had, they may have won a few more games, but they used to come to the den, think they'd, think they'd come and turn us over. They couldn't do it. They yeah. f- for a long time they couldn't do it. And you know the the playoff, the playoff semi final um, when they we made them cancel forty five thousand hotel rooms in London, will is was absolutely fantastic. There's, even to the point, and the thing that sticks out for me, why I don't like them, and it wasn't even probably their fault. If you listen to the commentary of Jimmy Abdu's goal at Ellen Road, the Sky Sports pundits or commentators go, oh, they scored. It was as if we'd ruined the big Leeds loving. And I just yeah. grew up hating them mm-hmm. for that. I hated them for that. And I still do. And I, I you know, I, I really want them to go down. Although I, if we if we manage to like get promoted, I would like them to stay up so we can play them. But... Uh, uh, soon, uh, I, I, I look for, and I, I always as a kid when we were in the same league as them that was the fixture I looked for that was the one I wanted I will lead to home I want to know I want to know when we're playing and, when it and, is yeah yeah when it is <clears> and make sure I'm not booking a holiday or or I'm going to be there for that one um, two and three I think I would probably uh, third I would probably would, I, I will include West Ham I think there is obviously they are the rivalry between Millwall and West Ham is is you know well documented. I think we have played them a couple of times in in um, in, in in sort of our, our our lifetime. The the Valentine's Day massacre uh, was a was a great was a great moment for for Millwall fans to, to beat them so convincingly. I think again we don't play them enough for me to 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 really have a sort of more of a passion about it, but. They obviously are our main rivals, so I would obviously have to include them. And and one that's a little bit, um, I think you went Crystal Palace with with your on on, on your episode. I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to go for the other South London club. I'm going to go for Charlton, and it's it's purely because they just they're like the annoying brother that just they don't leave you alone. They're always they've always, I mean I, I don't know about you, but I saw the other day there was a guy who would created a Twitter account just to try and troll Millwall fans. He was a Charlton supporter, and they, they do it. All. And I just think, grow up. It's just a club that needs to grow up. And yeah, <clears throat> I, I actually, I I know personally one of their old goalkeepers, um, and I never ever let him forget that he was in goal the season. I saw Millwall score four past him at, at, at um, the Valley and score, saw them score four past him at the Den. And uh, I, I trust me, I don't let him. I don't let him in. The end of that. <laughs> don't let him um, forget it. No, God, no. The, the, when I saw him up the, after, the, I saw him a couple of weeks after the the, the, the second. I think we beat him four 0 at the Den, and he just tried to hide. So you no, you're not getting away from from me. And I just think like as to say, the rivalry with him, they're just a. They're so desperate to beat us, and the, and the way that they go about it, it's just I just find that I just they're just an annoying, an annoying club that uh, they just get on my nerves. To be honest, they and as I say, they don't beat us. So yeah, I think I think because of our recent record against them, I, I I'm a bit like yeah, I mean I'm, yeah, I hate them, but meh. but with Palace, I just can't again, stand them. It's one of those, isn't it, where I think we've played a lot more against Charlton and Leeds than we have Crystal Palace and West Ham. I think the the cup game against Palace uh, last year, third round last year, fourth round. Yeah, yeah. That was the first time we played them in quite a while. And again, I look forward, don't get me wrong, the draw come out and it's like, oh, it's fantastic. We're playing Palace. It's, it renews the, the rivalry. But I said, oh, for me, my rivals, or the, certainly Charlton and Leeds, are in there because we've played them a lot over the years since I've been following the club. And they're just two clubs that I just, yeah, I can't. At Leeds, Leeds, I no, I, I honestly, I cannot <laughs> stand them. They're just everything about them. Apart from. Um, 
Charlie Cresswell, he's all right. Yeah, he goes all right, doesn't he? He's, yeah, he's yeah, not he's bad. Right. Well, if anyone's listening from the from the Leeds, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get K fan <laughs> YouTube or anything. We're, yeah, we'll have him if you're getting rid of him. He's not that good. Oh yeah, yeah. For the purposes of that, he's terrible. You don't want. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, and then moving on to things that you might change about Millwall, the club, anything at all. Is there anything in particular you would change about us, or maybe being a Millwall fan? The this is an interesting. This was an interesting one, and I was thinking about this quite hard because I would actually, and this is going to really, really controversial, I think. But the year we made the cup final, which is undoubtedly probably the biggest moment in our history, we were on the verge of being promote, getting in the playoffs, and being promoted, and. We ended up, after the Sunderland game, we ended up, um, I think we won one in our, out of our last 10 games. And it took us out of the playoff. We ended up finishing ninth or 10th. And it, it was obvious what had happened. The players were all didn't want to get injured or suspended or miss the cup final. I wouldn't change the cup final for anything, but we all knew that it was incredibly unlikely that we were going to beat Manchester United in the FA Cup final. We knew that. And we knew that anybody like that would perhaps didn't make the squad would still be part of the day. They would they were all invited. They all went to the you know the Millennium Stadium. They wouldn't have been left out kind of thing. And I just wish we could, we had changed the men if I could change the mentality of the players for those ten games because I think I honestly think that we we threw away promotion because the players were scared about missing the FA Cup final. That's what I would like to change the mentality of the players. I know it's hard, and if I was a player and looking forward to a cup final, I'd probably wouldn't want to go into tackles as much as as I would, or or if you know if you um you know let your emotions get the better of you and get sent off or something. But I, I, that would be something I wish I could change because I think we could have made the Premier League a lot sooner. Well, we, we haven't, so we, we would have been an opportunity to make it. I, I wouldn't change too much. I think uh, in terms of being a fan, you know, you go to places, you go away from home, you get treated like you're the worst set of people in the world. They, they chat, they close Which all we the generally tubes. are. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, sometimes it's hard to argue it. It is hard to argue, but... They closed Not that's tubes. a bad thing, by the way, just for no. the record, I quite like the fact that we've used that. They close the tube stations, they close train stations, they make it like Leeds make you pick up your tickets on the motorway, they do what they can to try and to try stop and make going. it difficult and stop you going. I wouldn't change anything about necessarily being a Millwall fan. I love the when someone you don't know or you just meet for the first time and you get on the conversation of oh, You're do a you like football? Fan. Yeah. Oh, I'm a Millwall go, fan. Oh. And the look the look yeah. and and that reaction, I'm kind of like, yeah, I'm I'm used to that now. You say we're like, as a kid, yeah, I yeah, hated yeah. it. As a kid, it used to bug me, but now I'm just, I'm just like, well, that it is, it is what it is. To be honest with you, I, so I wouldn't necessarily change anything about being a fan. I, I think our supporters are, um, arguably, and it might be biased, but we have we have some absolutely amazing supporters that. And touching on to what happened at QPR, you know, bad press, which wasn't our fault with the um, minute silence and and the QPR fans shouting out. We do so much for charities. We do so much for opposition fans. Bradley Lowry, the little, the young lad, the Birmingham fan who obviously was treated very poorly. And, and, and you know, we, we made a big thing about that. We do everything we can to support charities and, and opposition fans. And, and I wouldn't change us for the world. I wouldn't. I love it. I love going. I love the atmosphere. I love the kind of siege mentality. So, change the mentality from that 2004 perhaps season, but I wouldn't change too much. Good stuff. Good stuff. All time favourite Millwall shirt. Do you have one? I do. I do actually. And it's the Headley Court. Touching on what we've just, uh, the, the topic we've just come off of, the Headley Court kit. Uh, I, again, if, if, if you could write down or, or make a note of things that make Millwall who we are. That is definitely up there for, for one of them. That was a, an amazing thing to do. It was um, 
it was it wasn't done we wasn't they, they weren't doing it to, to make people think oh look what Millwall have done and and they did it because they wanted to raise awareness for for, for Headley Court and obviously the World War One the World War One um, it was commemorative for the, I think the start of World War One I. I actually have I have one a um, little bit of a story on that I didn't get one I tried to get one and, and they were sold out and people were selling them on eBay and there was a fella on Twitter and he message he tweeted out and said his mates let him down, hasn't paid him the money. I'm selling a shirt. Does anybody want it? And I happened to be the first one to message him. He said, yeah. And, if, and he, it, lap, you know, in the gods, it actually was a shirt size that fitted me. So <laughs> I could, I could actually wear it. And I, I never forget that guy. Um, I stayed in contact with him. Obviously, I, I didn't know him. It, it, it's all through Twitter. But I managed to get one and I have it. And it's, it's, I think it's a historical moment for us. And I just think what we did with that is, was, was absolutely brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Probably goes into my next question not quite nicely. Is so your favourite piece of Mill memorabilia? Is that up there? It is. It's second, actually. Okay. And I, I'm going to go on to another shirt and I'm going to take it back to Baz Savage. And this is, you were probably thinking, what the hell <laughs> are you back talking again. about? Yeah. <laughs> when I said that I'd asked Baz Savage for his autograph, what I'd actually done is. That year, the year he signed for us, we had the third kit, the Brazil kit, the yellow. I think it was a PEDA was the sponsor. It was the yellow kit that we, it was the first time we'd done it in ages. And, and there was, they were limited to however many they, they um, produced. And I got one. And rather than, than I mean, don't really wear kits to, to, to football. I wear them playing football or training or something. But rather than wear it, I thought, you know what? I'm going to get the whole squad to sign it. And I personally went round. I got to games early. I just did what I could to get the entire squad to sign the shirt. And I did it personally. It wasn't, you know, like sometimes you can buy them online or, or whatever. And I, but I did it personally. And the only player that I never got on there was Alan Dunn. He was the one player I just missed. I couldn't, I couldn't, I just, did, I just didn't get it signed. And I kind of forgot about it. And a bit strange, I actually sent him a message on Facebook after he'd left the club and said, oh, you know, I really need you to, I really want, is there any way we can sort this out? Is there anything we can do? You're the only player that's missing off of the shirt. And he actually, we, somehow we've become, I, I, I say somehow, I obviously added him on Facebook because I wanted to be friends with him all football now. <laughs> obviously. And, and um, we got chatting and he said, look, uh, when I come to the den, we'll, we'll sort something out. And he did. He come back and he knew who I was. He was like, oh, you're the weird guy from Facebook that <laughs> hadn't been asked me to sign the shirt. And I was like, yeah, that's me. And he signed. I finally got him to sign the shirt. And um, so, yeah, that's probably my favourite piece of memorabilia because it was something that I got the squad to do myself. I didn't buy it. I physically got every single one of them to, to get their signature on there, which I was I was quite pleased with. I feel like my answer was massively underwhelming now. I'm saying I've got a few prints on my wall and got a picture that I'm going to inherit from my dad. So The, the thing is, you say that, though. You say that. I, I have a lot of shirts. But like, growing up, I always got either the home or away. I picked one every year. And as I've got older, I've, I've, I say, I, 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 when I play football, because I, the team I play in, I sort of six or so I play in blue, I can wear a Millwall shirt to play. To play in, so I've got a lot of shirts, but I wouldn't class them necessarily as memorabilia because it's just it's different, isn't it? Like memorabilia to me is like a signed football or a signed program or something unique, and that's the that was that's really the only thing I would say that's unique that I have. Mate, they're good things to have though, and as you yeah. said, it's something that you've kind of gone and done. So yeah, it's a, yeah. It's a good piece of memorabilia. That that's a good yeah. piece of memorabilia. Well, look, that brings us to the end of the Who Are You with Stephen. I've really enjoyed that, mate. Um, it's always nice it's to get fun. insight in in other Millwalls fans' history, why they supported the club and favourite moments, etc. So, no, I really enjoyed that. And I think we said at the start of the show, no better way to spend Valentine's Day than, than with you, my friend. So, yeah, really enjoyed that. Yeah, no, uh, as I say, we've, uh, again, the listeners have probably heard us say this a few times. We've done back to back. Obviously, we did, we recorded Ben's earlier and we've done mine. And it's nice to, to, um, to have those reminiscing. Reminisce. Uh, yeah. And stories that you don't always get the chance to tell because you always tell the, uh, the, the, the cup finals and Wembley, but it's sometimes the little things that, that you don't get to speak about that sometimes it's nice to hear other people's stories. And as you said, 
Uh, we've spent a good few hours on Valentine's Day together, and I'm sure I think there's a space later, so we'll get even more time together. So what more could you want? Absolutely. Absolutely. And for any of the listeners that want to get involved, we're really keen to hear more of your Millwall stories at that Millwall pod on Twitter. Uh, drop the guys a message and we'll get you on the show to do a who are you and talk through your favourite Millwall moments. Um, if you're listening, liked what you've heard tonight, there'll be more of the series coming out of the who are you's with the regular panel. Like and subscribe to that Millwall pod and look forward to speaking to you all soon. Cheers. Just just before we go, just before we go, you can even pick if you want me or Ben to, to interview to you. So you can it. pick your favourite and, yeah. um, and, and I won't be offended if you pick Ben. <laughs> I, I will promise. be offended if he picks Stephen. <laughs>